Hello, I'm Ben Domencino, and this is Weather Pulse. Today's episode is coming to you from the Australian Meteorological and Oceanographic Society's conference from the University of New South Wales. This is the first in a series of episodes where we sit down and have coffee with a climate scientist. Today we spoke to Professor Terry Hughes, who's the director of the Australian Research Council's Centre of Excellence for Coral Reef Studies, and he told us all about the Australian Great Barrier Reef and how it's expected to change in the future. Barrier Reef is important, not just to Australia, but, but to the world. And, and of course, coral reefs occur throughout the tropics, so they're incredibly valuable to about 200 million people who live mainly in small, rapidly developing countries. So reefs provide food security and jobs to uh, many, many people. There, there's a social and economic reason why we should be protecting them better. Corals bleach when they're stressed, so you can make a coral bleach in many ways if you take it into an aquarium and torture it. If you, if you make the water too hot or too cold, if you change the salinity, uh, if you add sediment to the water, if you add pesticides to the water, people do experiments like that all the time. And when the coral is sufficiently stressed, it turns white. Bleach, bleaching is very conspicuous and spectacular. That, that's why we're very confident that the Barrier Reef bleached for the first time as recently as 1998. Because if it had bleached earlier that decade or in the 80s, 70s, 60s, we would have seen it. Um, so mass bleaching at the scale of the Barrier Reef and larger is a modern phenomenon caused by global warming. Bleaching was unheard of when I was uh, a student. Uh, the first bleaching I saw was in the Caribbean in 1987. In the 1980s, uh, the average gap between the first bleaching event as they were starting to be recorded and the second one was about 25 years. Today, the average gap between pairs of bleaching events is only six years, so it's, it's getting shorter and shorter. So the climate models tell us that in 50 years time with business as usual emissions back-to-back -back bleaching will be the, the new normal. That's considered by some people to be a sort of climatic endpoint for reefs. The reality is um, it's very dangerous for coral reefs already to have only five or six years as the average gap because it takes longer than that to get a full recovery of the corals if they're badly damaged. So we will still have a Great Barrier Reef in a decade or in 50 years, but the nature of the reef, what it looks like, will depend critically on whether we can reach the Paris 21, one and a half to two degree targets or not. If we do, then I'm pretty optimistic we'll have a Barrier Reef to show our grandkids. If we don't, if we go to four, five, six degrees of global average, warming, then we won't have coral reefs as we understand them today in the future. 